everybody. Good afternoon. Um, so today is going to be a fun one. Uh, instead of doing the normal live, I'm just sitting around not talking or not demonstrating anything. Today I wanted to go into something that I think is going to be very useful for you. Uh, more specifically, if you need to put eye drops in, uh, in your goggles eyes. But this same system can work um, from across the board. So Rosa is actually wearing a cone the vast majority of the time um, because she injured her eye out in the yard running um, in the backyard. We've got like shrubs and stuff and bushes, whatever. And she took a branch to the eye, and it's not horrible uh, in the sense that she's not kind of bad enough that she has eye drops quite regularly. And she can't rub her eye, so that's why she has to wear a cone. So I found out though that. Um, Putting eye drops in her eye was not something that she enjoyed. And I tried to be lazy about it, throwing it out there. And what I tried to do was put food in her face, like so, and then somehow put an eye drop in there, you know, and got away with it once or twice. Uh, especially, you know, like trying to examine that, putting food in her face and having, you know, trying to examine the eye. Just, you, know, you might get away with it once or twice. Um, but it's not something that's sustainable because they will start to sensitize to it. No, quick note, I don't have a headset on or anything like that. So Dexter is in the room playing, having a blast. So you're going to definitely hear some, I hear going, uh, playing some toys. So point being though, oftentimes we try to manage, we try to manage these things um, by kind of just putting food in the face and saying, okay, let me look in your ear. Okay, don't pay attention to what I'm doing. Let me look in your ear or let me do something to you. And it doesn't make it better in the long run. So what I did was I decided to do a little training with Rosa and actually get her to stay for her eye drops. I've got three sets of things that I have to do today. It is time for her and her eye drops. Uh, and so what I like, I gotta keep stopping her from rubbing her eye. So that's why I keep grabbing her face. If you're gonna hurt yourself, um, I'm trying to rub it for her very gently. But so what I wanna do is kind of show you all uh, a little idea of what we can do. I, I like the whole idea of a chin rest. And so kind of putting your hand out and having your dog rest its chin in your hand. Uh, and it's something that you can teach your dog. And the idea is what I would like for her in the long run is I'd like to be able to have her put her chin on my hand and for me to kind of pull back her eye and stick a drop in there. So that's what I'd like to do, kind of like I just did there minus the drop. So it didn't necessarily just come to her, though. I got cute stuff. Uh, what I like to do to start is we can work on kind of a chin rest. And so you can kind of do some position feeding where you specifically feed your dog while his or her chin is in your hand. So that's one way to go about it. And that's what I did with her to start. Uh, and I did this training throughout her life, not just recently, the state part that is. But once you know your dog kind of figures out that resting its head in your hand equals you know, tasty snack, then you can start working on a stay. I hope I have enough snacks here. Um, so you can put your hand out, have the chin rest, and you can actually do a food dangle distraction. You know, it's kind of our typical stay plan. So if you've done, if you're a student of ours and you've gone through um, some stay, you can kind of jump right in with the normal stay plan. So chin rest, boom, two, three, I can just kind of dive through it with her, but um, something to that effect where she realizes that leaving it there uh, is a good option. So then what I did after that was I taught her that I needed her to rest her chin in my hand while I kind of opened up her eye and I rewarded her for that. Um, now, when I did it with her initially, because um, she was a little uncomfortable with it, again, I tried to, in the early stages, just kind of get away with putting food in her face and, and doing, the, doing it, but she was a little uncomfortable with it. So I did have, um, you know, it was broken down into a lot of steps. And also if I did something and she like pulled away, for instance, mm -hmm. I would say too bad. And I pulled my hands away, the girl. So for example, like a couple of those times, she's inspecting my hand for food, she might do it again. So if I'm doing this, good. I want her to stay just like she's doing. Um, and this was not easy for her initially. So the idea though is if you stay, she wants to rub that eye so bad. If you stay, you get something good. Now, the other thing too is, um, like what does what the eye drop ball predict? So in a dog, don't you? In a dog's mind, you know, as soon as they see this and they see us coming at their face, I mean, if they've learned that this predicts something they don't like, then they will learn to avoid it. So I've turned it into, uh, for her into something that she does enjoy. So you can start with the cap off, but basically, I'm going to keep going, you know, get the chin rest going. Then I would stick it right above her eye, kind of pry her eye open. I'm going to try to switch angles here too, so that we all get a better, better angle. 
don't have detail with it. So, you know, chin here, this goes right here and right above. Good. And that's the whole idea. Now, again, this is something I had to build up to. So, initially with her, it was something along the lines of I had this going, I'd go, good. And I have a reward for just a quick one. And I like to get about five in a row successfully. So, good. And it's really not that hard when you're doing it that quickly. Um, you're doing it that quickly. For her, I mean, I was able to accomplish this relatively fast. And what I mean by that is going through a quick little training plan. Within like five minutes, I was able to get her to let me put the drops in without having to like physically you know, hold her or something like that. Um, and then this morning or yesterday morning when I put drops in, I didn't have to go through any sort of warm ups. I was able just to go with the final step, which was having her stay still. Come on, water, buddy. Go ahead. Go get it. What? I'm not sure she understands what I'm saying, but I can tell she wants water. So I was able to get to the uh, kind of the final step. The wild record, try to get to the final step. I didn't even have to warm her up, which was cool. So I was able to walk right up to her, boom, boom, drop it, and feed her. So whenever she's done drinking, I'm going to go to that step. I've got a couple drops I have to put in here. One is a gel. Yeah. If one is a gel, so I actually have to stick that one on my finger because I cannot get that in her eye. It, it doesn't drip out, it kind of just curls and all that. But so my kind of my last step though, before actually doing it, was I have a bottle in hand. I've got her doing this. I stick this right above here. And I've got my one finger is kind of prying her eye open. Because I mean, she's not like voluntarily keeping her eye open. It's just like default, she's closing it. So I do have to spread her eye open. Uh, and then we put a drop in. So I'm going to go for that now. So. I guess I have to move my hand around this way. So I get the drop in, I'm gonna give her a little jackpot. I'm gonna do another one because it missed a little bit, so it actually drips on her arm. So like this, like this. I have to use my thumb to pry it open. Good girl. And in, and then I give her a little jackpot for that because I want her to know that, you know, actually allowing it to happen equals a big, big payout. And in the early stages, I had to give a very, very, very big payout, meaning um, I had like the cookie jar, I mean, big, tasty peanut butter filled pretzels. She got all that for, for it. Now it's a lot easier for her. Uh, I still have to kind of prod her eye open because again, it's injured, so she by default wants to keep it shut. So I've got one in, and this is kind of a little crash course, but if we summarize again, like first step is like teaching the chin rest. And rewarding her for that. The second step is adding in like abstraction, so chin rest plus teaching her how to stay for it. And then I kind of, because I'd already taught her that stuff, I went into kind of chin rest with having her stay with the bottle above her eye. That was really, really hard for her because again, the bottle had already predicted something you know, falling into her eye. So that step was with the cap on, boom, boom, boom. So that was that, I fed. And then with the cap off, same kind of thing, not that she can tell the difference, but or maybe she can, I don't know. But so then boom, drop it in, and then fed her heavily for that. And you know, there's a mild, I mean, it's not, there's a little bit of restraint involved because I have to like position my hands to actually open that eye. Um, it's not like put her in the headlock and try to get it done. She can pull away at any point if she wants to. So that's really important for helping a dog feel comfortable too, is if you're doing this and you are physically restraining them to the point where they can't move, it's actually, no, it doesn't go smoothly because you're kind of taking away their option to walk away or to move away. So with all that being said, um, it's very easy for me now to put these drops in. And you know, this is even something that helped me when she's got to go for rechecks at the vet. So we went last Monday, not this past Monday, we went before it and kind of determined what was wrong with all the eye drops. And then I started the training like the next day. Uh, the following Monday, which was two days ago, um, we had to examine the eye again. And instead of like having to put her in a headlock and like pry that eye open, I was able to say, okay, hold on, let's do this. I can pry the eye open with her kind of voluntarily doing it um, and she can be rewarded for it. And it allowed for an eye exam without like a full on body restraint. So now I'm on to drop number two, um, same kind of procedure. I just want to have her do that. Uh, Oh, I had it. I couldn't get the drop to go in the right spot. I'm going to reward her for that anyway. She technically did everything I wanted, but I couldn't get the drop to actually go in her eye. It dripped past it. So back up again. 
Bingo, the girl, and jackpot. I still like to do a little extra for the actual thing. Again, I'm not having to do warm up steps now. So before I had to do all these warm up steps to kind of build up to it. Don't rub. Uh, and now I have to, uh, now I don't have to. Right. That one, I know this isn't fun. And she's not loving this, but she's voluntarily letting me do it. I have to keep blocking her from rubbing her eye. Uh, but so she's not loving this, it, but it is what it is. It has to be done. But she is participating, and that's what I really want. Can't do it. So last up, I thought, and I actually I typically do this with the cone arm because that way she can't rub it all. But I'm not going to do it with the cone arm while y'all are uh, like you wouldn't be able to see much. So then what I did is this last one is like a gel. It's like an antibiotic or something. I don't know. None of it. Um, and so. I like to stick it on my thumb and I washed my hands before this. And so I stick it on my thumb so that way when I kind of spread her eye open. I know it's not fun, right? So I've got it on my thumb. I'm gonna just spread and take it right up and head up to it. So I know this is a lot. Put it in there. Good girl. So I just stuck that on her eyeball. She gets jackpotted. And Ta-da. I'm going to stick the cone back on her now, just so we don't have any more rubbings. Uh, and I like to, I mean, she does not love this cone. I don't blame her. So I like to put it on her and I give her a bunch of snacks for it because it's not fun. Uh, there it is. You're back in the cone and more snacks. So summarizing all that, I had a dog that two weeks ago did not want anything to do with what I just did. She um, was really avoiding it the whole time. And now she'll lie down and just be a willing participant. I can't kind of stress the importance of doing this stuff enough because if we try to just manage and we try to just get away with what we can, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Again, she's not loving this, but I've got her to the point where she's able to stay still while we do it. Uh, again, not loving it though. And, yeah, and again, if she's not loving it, she's not loving it, uh, and I'm doing something incorrectly, it's probably going to get worse. So again, if I put food in her face and I try to put the eye drops in, it's not going to take her long before she, no, what is that? What is that it's not going to take her long before she realizes that food in her face actually predicts the drop. And she's going to avoid it. There's a lot of dogs that will run away when they're, when they're trying to administer ear drops or eye drops or whatever. The same, same kind of generous. Or, or target kind of behavior can be used um, if you're trying to do really anything. So, you know, if, if, if you're wanting to look at teeth or do ears or something like that, there's, there's a lot of awesome plans out there. There's this thing called the Husbandry Project, um, and, and it has all these wonderful training plans. Point being, though, um, if you try to just mask it and then say, well, let me just try to get away with putting something in your face, it doesn't work very well. You might get away with it once or twice, but as soon as food predicts a bad thing, your dog is going to be um, avoiding it and trying to get away. So we actually want, I don't really want to call it the bad thing, but it is what it is. The bad thing, the eye drops going in to be the predictor of the tasty food, and that's what's going to get a dog to tolerate it a lot more. Um, I, I don't I don't know. I need some more water or something. I don't know what how it feels for them to go in. I mean, I would, maybe, I would think it would provide relief, but I guess I, I don't know. So uh, it might be something she really does not like. And so she's gonna, she's doing a great job of letting me do all this, um, letting me do all this. So point being, uh, if you need help with this kind of stuff, it's actually really doable. Rosa uh, also really dislikes having her nails done. And, you know, kind of the similar things, we, we get them to voluntarily participate, which is really cool. Uh, and you kind of just follow a plan where it's step by step. That's something I help with with you know, clients and, and all that. So feel free to reach out if you need help with anything like this. Um, again, if you try to just mask it, sometimes you get away with it. You put some food in their face, and I let you. And I got once or twice, but sooner or later they're going to catch on. So if you need, you know, work on stay. If you don't have any stay, like if your dog has never been taught to stay, we do have our digital course that has the whole stay plan built in. We can make it self paced. Um, so that's a great way to do it. Or if you've already worked on stay uh, in like a basic class with us uh, and you know the plans where we're doing food angles and everything, that's a great starting point. So stick your hand out, kind of, you're almost really gonna lure your dog's face 
into the spot. I don't know if she's, I don't know if she's even noticeable. I can't do this, but put it in the spot and then feed. Uh, and so therefore, they start to learn, oh, if I put my chin on his hand, he's supposed to be stuck for me. And then in turn, you can start teaching stay in that position, and then you can start adding in other distractions like hand over head and kind of poking eye and all that, bottle of head. So that was something that, again, I was able to accomplish in like five minutes with her because she had prior training. For a brand new dog, I don't expect that it's going to be that quick. You might have to sit down for 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, so I would also recommend not waiting. So the fact that I did some chin rest practice with her throughout her, uh, throughout her life uh, made this very, very easy. So if it was brand new and shiny five drops in right now, uh, you might have to just manage the first time and hopefully you get away with it. But if you've got to give eye drops later in the day, I would highly recommend sitting down, working on a stay exercise, and incorporating the eye drops as part of like, the distraction to it. Um, that will save you in the long run. And again, now, and this took me a while because I'm doing a video and showing all these steps, but tonight when either myself or, or Kelly has to give her, her eye drops, we can just walk right up, boom, boom, drop, treat, boom, boom, drop, and we can get it all done in like 30 seconds. Um, and that, that will only be the two drops because she gets the three once again. But nonetheless, think of that, um, put, you know, put some time into it, it doesn't take long, uh, but be proactive, start working on this now. You might even have, uh, if you wear like contact lenses or something, you might even already have like little bottles of saline or something. I'm not telling you to put it in your dog's eye, that's not my, my job to do, but nonetheless, you could you know walk up with the bottle and practice a plan where you're you know incorporating that into soon. So that's not so scary, is it? All right, that's all I got for y'all today. Um, which of any questions? Um, I might even do like a nails one next, where it's basically I, I like to use downstay for a lot of these things. So for nails, I teach a downstay, and then what I do is incorporate you know getting the nails in as sort of like a distraction to the stay. So thanks for watching. I hope you all have a good rest of your week. Have a good holiday, stay safe, and take care. Bye. Oh, yeah, where's my mouse?